Hello everyone and welcome back. I went on another adventure, this time to Pikeville, Kentucky. Never been to Pikeville, Kentucky and was alerted to this Comic Con by Poppy Goose himself. Apparently he was on a motorcycle ride and said, hey, there's a, there's a Comic Con out there. So the first thing I do, I say, hey, maybe I can get a press pass to this. I reached out to the promoter, said, hey, can I get a press pass? They said, sorry, we don't offer press passes. So I tried, I pulled the, the Sticky Goose card and no, nah, I... There's no free entry to this party. So I packed up everything and we went on a camping trip. I mean, I, I lived in a tent while uh, while I was there and I really enjoyed it. As soon as I got to Pikeville, Kentucky, this is what I was greeted with in the Appalachian Mountain Convention Center place. This this was this was the showroom floor. Pretty decent size little space, several vendors. Hi there. I think it's roughly about a four. I don't think it could get any higher. The biggest thing is spineware. Uh, can I take this, or can you take this out of the yeah. bag? Where are you guys out of? Uh, this is the town of Kentucky. Oh, nice. And if you're paying with cash, you can make an offer on anything. Okay. PayPal friends and family, is that same as cash? Uh, depends on the offer. But yeah, credit card, uh, we won't come off for a uh, sticker price, but cash. So. I mean, I'd offer you like $200 cash for this. 200 Mm, gonna have to pass on that. Okay. This is a really nice book. Yep. Did you take anything lower than four fifty? <laughs> yeah. The lowest I would do would be like uh, I could do three fifty, that would be the absolute lowest. Three fifty? Yeah. All right, so this is the Steel Boys from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. They were at their first convention. This young guy was 20 years old, friendly guy, and that was a nice copy of that book. Obviously, I lowballed him with the $200 offer. I was willing to pay more than that, and I've been looking for this book for a while. If you guys have been following the channel, this is the first appearance of Zatanna, Hawkman number four. And... Um, he, I don't think he understood what PayPal friends and family was. He does later on, spoilers, um, what that means because it's the same as cash if we're, you know, it's a peer-to-peer -peer money sharing service. So I, I think he understood that. Um, this was an excellent display. He had some really good books, great wall books, and everything was, you know, had been priced and it wasn't outrageous. So like... I felt like these 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 folks were were good folks, and they were willing to actually make some legitimate deals. A lot of these dealers that have been doing this for so long, it just feels like they're just stuck in their ways, and you can't get them to wiggle, or their books are priced so far off from the very beginning. Like you're you know you're just starting at zero basically. Um, but he had gone through and you know organized all of these little lots. I was very very impressed. It's complete and everything. Um... We, we can do better than 350 on it if you're interested. Yeah, I think there's a little, uh, yeah, a little bit right there too, just so you know. Okay. Yeah, and you can see the tape on this one. This is one of the greatest covers of all time. I know, it's awesome. Yeah, we got like a 7 0. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, that. Cool book. Yeah, it is. Do 50 for it. 50 for this one? Yep.
Okay, let me, I might be interested in this one in the Hawk, man. Okay, they're signed now, they say no, no recording allowed. Is there right? Awesome. Dude, that guy's a nut job. Dude, I was there with you when it, I was talking next to you. And he... Can I walk around here? Yeah, that's, that's what it's Okay. Here. Any vendors here got anything super crazy? Have you seen? Um, I've seen a couple booths with some decent Silver Age stuff, which is getting harder and harder to find. I know, right? Yeah. Um, as far as the new comics, I'm not super up to date on the any of the new stuff, really, but definitely like which variant covers hot this week or anything. I'm not real <laughs> up to date on that, but... Well, that's impossible. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> to stay up on that. Very true. <laughs> you didn't make offers on any of them, really. Okay. Madam Web, man. Madam Web? It's hot. Well, I don't know anymore. <laughs> well, it'll, it'll plateau. Let's say that. Yeah, so, that's... I'll be really Will and Dylan Platt and Madam Web. So... Those are the guys um, from Hurricane, West Virginia, when uh, the promoter there threatened to call the police on me for um, attempting to film in there and me uh, talking. He said that I was going to talk trash about the dealers and he wasn't going to let me talk trash. That was who um, the, the those guys, that's what he were, where they were referring to. And those guys were actually there when all that popped off. Here. Oh, there's a right there. Oh, sweet. Get some bigger key books for our individual price. Okay. Are these your books? Yeah, but we want to make some wheeling deals on them. Gotcha. Not set in stone. So it was crazy that day, and it was good to see those guys. I'm always always good to see uh, those guys. Um, this is another dealer. This is not the same as the Goblin Traders. These guys had some other dollar books and things, and then he said this was the key box. Um, he said that these prices were negotiable, but I mean, at this point, it's just like, you know, they're so far off what I'm willing to pay. Um, I, I wasn't even going to even make any offers on any of this stuff. I, I did like that Moon Knight book and then the, uh, the American Gothic, you know, homage to the Moon Knight cover. I thought that was kind of cool. There's some Brew Baker, Iron Fist. I just picked up that omnibus. I'm excited to read that. But yeah, as far as key books goes, I think that's a bit of a stretch. Um, so I moved on. This guy here, this this vendor, I've actually seen him before in Huntington. Nice guy. I think he was he's the Hobby Hole. Um, he might be from West Virginia. I'm not sure. He's always got some pretty decent slabs. Good wall display. Good organization. And this was a cool Bizarro book. I'm not sure what issue number that was, but I thought it was like a Bizarro family. Still looking for first appearance of Bizarro. I'd like to get that at some point. At this point in the convention, I'm like kind of blown away. I was not expecting this to be this good. Like my expectations were so low. Can I look at this Doom Patrol book up here? All that. There's better copies than there's worse copies. <laughs> there's like about a hundred staples in this thing. Yeah, yeah, so that book was in pretty rough shape. Um, he was really friendly. We actually talked a little bit about business and, you know, if you were a dealer now in 2024 as opposed to 2021. That one's newly graded. Uh, if we submitted that one or if it came in Alexis. It's hard to even put numbers on them now. Price wise, oh. they change. Yeah, and we just kind of shop, talk shop about you know the prices of things just crashing, the fluctuations. You just can't even keep up to date on prices. But you know he wasn't far off, and he he had done a pretty good job trying to price with what he had. And then we kind of talked about if you know if you're a dealer in 2024 and a, you know you're doing this to feed your family. Um, that is, that is terrifying stuff. I can't, I can't imagine having gotten in so far, uh, and, and really, you know, running the circuit and saying, Hey, you know, relying on people to come and buy, but hold the phone. This is Bub's comics and his beautiful wife. They were so friendly to me. I came over, I chatted with them. I, I go up to him and I say, Hey, I know you on YouTube. You're you're famous. Can I get your autograph? And then we started, we started talking. I had never met him before. 
Um, I've only seen him on other YouTube videos. He was great. I, I, we, I stayed and talked to them for you know, 15, 20 minutes. And then uh, these boxes right here is where I spent a predominant amount of my time you know, digging through these, um, these graphic novels. And if these boxes look familiar to anybody in the South, this is because these are the, this 007 Bond guy. He's like at all the Southern shows. Um, he's pretty funny. And uh, he, he has like 40% off trades. And I think if you buy like two or more, it's like 50% off. But he's using the MSRP on the back of these trade paperback books. Great way to enjoy it without paying arm and a leg. Like the first <laughs> issue, that's, you know, price. And that way you can read it and enjoy it. It's like, tell people, if you like it that good, then you go get you the real thing. Yep. Yeah, it just sold an NYX3. So you're just getting one to read and have it, right? <laughs> yeah. I'd like to read the story, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of these. You know, you'll get one, you sit down and read like one through six or one through four, whatever storyline, just like that. And not yeah. have to pay a portion. He's a nice guy. It was just funny, like, as you're digging and he comes over and he, he kind of turns on the salesmanship. Uh, it was just just kind of funny to, to hear that. I actually found something for another customer and I was, I was like trying to get a discount. First mask. Yep, can, can I, I, can I uh, look inside yeah, this? Yeah, take the tape work, make sure it don't catch okay. So this was also funny. He he said, "Do you know what that book is?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's the first mask." It was just, I've never had a dealer like um, you know give me a little test before. I, I thought that was kind of funny too. This is a cool book. This is a book that really wasn't on my radar specifically to find, but as soon as I saw it, I was like. That's the first mask. I was like, that's so cool. And then it has like kind of an homage cover to some of the old EC horror type books. Um, and mask, you know, his original form is on the cover too. So that's, that's always kind of cool. But um, then I saw, I mean, his wall books were actually very good. And then I saw this Judge Dredd number one. This is also a book that is not, wasn't really on my radar, but man, it caught my eye. This is actually not the first appearance of Judge Dredd. This is Judge Dredd in an American comic book. So uh, the first appearance of Judge Dredd is crazy expen expensive, and I'm not sure exactly what the name of that that title is. <laughs> All right, this guy, um, this was one of the best displays. Small, concise, but all fire. I mean, if you want to talk about like a good looking comic book collection, this is what this is. You know, silver, bronze age books displayed very, very well. Everything in very good shape. A, a, a lot of it was in great shape. Um, if you want to sell stuff, this is how you need to do it. Clear. Uh, concise pricing, great display, easy to flip through. Um, this guy definitely knew knew what he was doing. And then this caught my eye. This Jim Sterinko, um, Nick Fury, uh, a, a Shield, uh, number one, that trippy cover. And then also number four is awesome. I have that in the collection. But I saw that number one and I was like, ooh. And the price was not that far off. I mean, he was wanting $60.00. So it looked like he had priced everything um, very recently and he was kind of up to date on everything. So when you've got good prices like this and you've kept up to date, you're going to sell some more stuff. So also that first John Constantine 9.6 Swamp Thing book. Man, I have an 8.5 and I want to upgrade so, so bad. Uh, this is the dealer next to him. And, you know, it's just very different. You know, you've got piles of 
just all these long boxes, well, short boxes and long boxes of stuff. And, it, you know, you really kind of got to dig a lot more stuff. You know, when you've got that curated short box of just straight heat, Silver Age and Bronze Age stuff, it's like, man, just makes you want to buy. Now, I'm not saying that this guy didn't have great stuff. He did. But um, as you'll see here in a minute, some of this stuff wasn't priced. I didn't know if that was violence happening or... That's something. what I was thinking there. I was like, what? <laughs> Start. They're starting. <laughs> yeah, so like behind me while I was digging, like I heard a grown man like start screaming and then he, it sounded like they were yelling at each other. And I, I talked to the guy, I was like, I, I thought that there was violence happening. And, you know, I'm always on guard when I'm at these cons anyway, because, you know, I've had so much, so much problems in the past, specifically with Larry the Cable Guy kicking me out and wanting to call the cops and stuff. So, you know, it's just... I kind of am on guard just in general when I go to these things. The stuff without prices, what are these? Uh, just different prices. So that's actually the first appearance of Navy Lift. Yeah, it's not so, priced. Yeah, uh, 25 bucks, brother. Really. This? Uh, 30 on the first static. Okay. A lot of those are pretty much just double prices and stuff like that, or a couple dollars. I got 20 on that one. That was actually the first appearance of the character that turns into Silo. Mm -hmm. and right there is the difference, man. The difference between having your books priced and just. I mean, it was just interesting, like him, he's like, well, that's first Psylocke, and that's first Static, and that's first Nebula, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's why I'm getting it out of the box, and I, I just, I literally, I thought these were dollar boxes when I first saw it, because it, they, nothing was priced, and I was like, holy crap, this is in a dollar box, but we're back, and this is the haul. The first thing we got was this Dark Horse Presents number 10, the first appearance of The Mask. Yeah, I mean, it's got a couple color breaking uh, spine ticks. And then on that Soul Survivors panel, it looks like, I don't know that it's an indention or a little bit of writing. Um, and then this, it's got some indentions back there. Some of that could be pressed out, but then unfortunately it's kind of got some color rub um, on the spine in the back because it's got that, almost that teal blue. If you guys aren't familiar with this, this is the mask, like a, a comic book character turned to a movie character portrayed by Jim Carrey, one of my favorite movies as a kid. I'm, a, I'm really excited to read this, and I actually want to read the other mask run from Dark Horse. Cool book. Then Judge Dredd, number one. So this is Eagles, Eagle Comics presents Judge Dredd. Now there is a run of this. I think it has like 30 some issues. Dude, you would talk about a badass cover, man. Judge Dredd is freaking awesome. Um, I have never read any of his comics. I loved the new Judge Dredd movie that they came out with. It just seems like this is a character that, you know, is just incredible on, on the big screen. And then in the comics, I can only imagine how awesome this is going to be. So I'm going to try to find some kind of trade or omnibus uh, that collects this and maybe hopefully you know, the original, the original run with his first appearance and the beginning run, um, because this art is incredible. These, this just looks awesome. It looks gritty, looks violent, looks awesome. Speaking gritty and violent, uh, this is Deadpool kills the Marvel universe. So I bought those two key comics and then uh, several trade paperbacks, which you'll see, um, and I got those two books and then these trade paperbacks from that 007 Bond guy for $110. I don't necessarily think that that was like the best deal. Um, to be honest, I think um, I, I, I would say that the first mask is, you know, like a $25, $30 book, same way as the Judge Dredd. And then these trade paperbacks, you know, if you want to call them half off of uh you know what the cover price was i guess that's 
close. But this NYX trade paperback is out of print and um, is is sought after. All four of these trade paperbacks are sought after. Um, and I was interested to read that Wanted because it was based on that movie with Angelina Jolie. I've always wanted to read that. And it's Mark Millar, so it's going to be good. And then this uh, Avengers Arena, people have told me good things. So I ended up buying the Nick Fury Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. number one. This incredible, trippy, psychedelic Jim Sterenko cover. I mean, to me, this, his Nick Fury number four, um, the Hulk annual one, and then the uh, X-Men Polaris 50 and 49 are my favorite covers of his. And I have all of those now. And um, I mean, I feel like I've got the Strinko starter pack. This is a very nice book. I got this book for $50 cash. I mean, to me, uh, this book is worth more than that. Talk about an undervalued book, in my opinion. And then I got this, Commandi number one, first appearance of Commandi. This is Jack Kirby's baby. And man, look at that face. Just that iconic Jack Kirby face and this art. Holy cow. And he is just, if he's not the best of all time, he's top three for sure. Um, this is a clean copy of this book. I got this book for $45. Um, and I think that was a steal in my opinion. Um, if you don't know, this book came out after Planet of the Apes, uh, the Charlton Heston 1968 movie, one of my favorite movies of all time. And that is what caught my eye for this because it looks like the ending of Planet of the Apes. And then I finally got one. Hawkman number four. I've owned this book how many times now? Um, I can't remember. Uh, but now I've got one and it's staying in the collection. So... It's got wear up and down the spine. The staples are attached, but they are, um, you know, there is wear around the staples. You know, you've got color breaking folds. This is a classic three to potentially a four um, with a clean and press. I, I don't know, you know, great how this would grade out, but it's it's in that ballpark, which is perfectly fine with me. I got this book for three hundred and fifty dollars. So I bought this and the first Commandi for $3.95. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled with that. I'm tickled to death with that, honestly. So $15 entry fee, $110 for the paper, the trade paperbacks and the, um, the other keys with the Judge Dredd and the mask. $50 uh, for the, the, the Strinko cover and then $3.95 for these two books. Yeah, I mean... I, I spent more than I thought I would at this convention, but there was a lot of great things here. What do you guys think? If at any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.